Hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? It's now Monday afternoon. It's, uh, well, it's not even afternoon. It's 11.42 in the a.m. Central Time. But I got up at, well, here, I woke up at like 3.30. I had my alarm set for 5 because I wanted to get up at 5 uh, and hit the road by 6. So I have enough time to get through Houston down to the bulk operation. Okay, okay. Did I tell you this? Oh, shut up. I'm gonna turn you down. Squat box. All right, here's what happened. I, in case I didn't tell you my last vlog, when I dropped, yeah, I did. I did. I had to go to the. Uh, I couldn't find an empty at the van yard, so they got me. They had me going to the bulk yard on my next assignment to get the empty. Then, so I tried Saturday to call. Say, hey, let me go somewhere else, and it didn't change by this morning. So anyway, I wanted to get up early enough so I can get my way through the Houston traffic down to the, the bulk yard and get back through the Houston traffic to get to Humble by my appointment at 8 o'clock. And I got there at 7.50, so I was there in time. And, um, yeah, they got me in the door and uh, loaded me up a couple hours. I was, I don't know, I was on site maybe an hour and 15 minutes total. So, but I am now in, I'm somewhere in Mississippi. Where am I at exactly? Vinton, Vinton, Mississippi. No. That's wrong. It's not Mississippi, is it? It's Louisiana. <laughs> Vinton, Louisiana. Uh, mile marker seven. I've only driven a couple hours. How many miles have I driven a couple today so far? 189 miles today from the driving to get the all the shit. But on this trip, about 110 miles uh, on the route. Anyway, I stopped at the Loves. I had to, I had to go potty. I had to go potty. So while I'm here, I was like, hey, let me just go ahead and do a 30. I don't plan on going no, I, since I, I did, I start my shift at six o'clock this morning, um, earlier than normal, just so I could, you know, do what I need to do. But I wanna, uh, so anyway, I'm gonna park about, in about four hours, about four o'clock, five o'clock. I'll have about an hour left on my 11 when I do park. But I'm gonna stop at this Flying J in, somewhere in Mississippi, Gulfport, I think is where it was. Uh, it's 270 miles away from me because the fuel there will be the cheapest along my route. I think I told you this before, the way I do my fuel is I'll look at the WEX, the car control app. It'll tell me the cheapest fuel along my route, regardless of what station it's at. Today, for example, was 330, or 329 now. 330 was the cheapest at some random shop. So then what I'll do is I will go down to find the next or the cheapest Pilot Flying J. Because the way I look at way I have it sorted when I open the app, from cheapest to most expensive. So I'll scroll down until I see the first Flying J Pilot. Look at that price minus our discount. And if our discount's within a couple pennies, I'll go to the Flying J or the Pilot, just same get the same fuel and uh, and get points. So anyway, that's kind of how I do my fuel. And a bit of this something that's significantly lower, even which a lot of times it is, I'll go to wherever that app says. But anyhow, I do have a question. Um, you know, I've been talking about uh, starting to cook, cook in the truck so I can eat a little better out here. As I say that, I just got some corn dogs <laughs> from Lowe's. But we all know the phones are listening to us. So ever since I started talking that stuff, I'm getting all these pop-ups in my feeds, right? Of different types of diets, you want to lose weight, whatever. Now I did the the low carb thing. It was sort of like a mixture between Atkins and low carb. Yeah, this is editing country right now. Atkins and low carb. <laughs> I, what I meant to say, because Atkins is low carb. What I meant to say was a mixture of like Atkins and keto. Not necessarily one or the other, just kind of a little bit of both. 2018. It was 2018 when I did that. 
And from what I can tell, I mean, and it was, you know, low carb. Get your car. My goal with that during that tenure was like 10 to 20 carbs a day, net, net carbs a day. Uh, if you don't know what net means, like to say if I eat a, 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 oh, let's just say I eat a burger. It has 40 carbs in it, right? But I eat like, or I drink like, I don't know, four glasses of Metamucil. It's got like five grams of carbs in it per serving. So that's 20 soluble carbs. So take that 20 minus the 40, or take the 40 minus the 20, and now you're at a 20 net. I just lied to you. I just, I explained to you the difference between, between uh, soluble fiber, not fiber, soluble carbs and heart food carbs. What I meant to say was, at the end of the day, if you take tack of all your carbs and all your fiber and everything else you do, take the fiber minus that from your carbs and that gives you your net. So whatever grams of carbs you take, every gram of fiber takes pretty much counteracts it. That's what net carbs means. <laughs> Whoops. It is. Anyway, I did that diet and I, lost, I did. I lost 75 pounds, like 80 pounds. Um, I lost like five pounds a week for like the first two or three months. I lost total around August of that year. It started in February and around August of that year. I never said I was losing five pounds a week. My, my wife was, was a, is a nurse, and I went to her doctor's office every every week, and, and I weighed, and I was losing like five pounds a week. So, but then of course, you know, you plateau and it slows down. I lost like 75, 80 pounds, and that's uh, six months from February to August. Then I had a heart attack. I didn't know it was a heart attack. I knew I was having problems in my, felt some kind of weirdness in my chest right here. Then I had one day I had a sharp pain by my foot, behind my arm. Then I went to immediately went to the to the ER and uh, I got tired of waiting. And I left and they called me about an hour later. Said your blood work came back. You, you got enzymes. You need to come back. I'm like, what the hell's an enzyme? She said, Jerry, you had a heart attack. I'm like, okay, I'll come back. Anyway, that's not that's not the point. The point is the question is, I've been looking at a lot of this uh, carnivore diet. It's been gaining popularity and traction over. The, I've seen it even before talking about this stuff. Problem with me back then. This carnivore diet is basically the same thing as the low the low carb diet, but the carnivore diet is zero plants, no veggies at all. It's just meat, eggs, some mild dairy, and water and salt. That's it. The problem I had with the low carb diet, which is basically the same, but I was able to eat uh, fruits and veggies, some, not all, just particular ones, and nuts and things like that. The problem that I had back then. It made it hard to poop. So for y'all people who are not eating fiber in your diet with these with this carnivore diet, how's your pooping doing? Pooping is hard on that on that type of and literally and physically. It's really hard and maybe after a while, after a little bit of being on it, it maybe it bounces out on the on the, on the carnivore only. I mean, I, I can't see anything wrong with you know meat, eggs, some cheese. And water. I can't see a downside of eating steak with every meal at all. Steak, pork chops, chicken, fish. I don't see a downside with that. But any of you who are experienced with it, again, like I said, I'm trying to get, I want to eat better. I want to do better out here. I want to, you know, work on my health a little bit. So that's the goal for me. So if any of you have any experience using the carnivore, or uh, maybe even talk about some other ones that you've experienced. Now, some that you've heard of, some that have worked for you. The goods and bads, please put them down in the, in the comments below and just kind of help your boy out. Give me some education. I don't want to have another heart attack. I told the doc when I had that heart attack, he's like, I told him, I was like, hell, if I had to try to get healthy this year, I turned 40 that year. Um, I quit smoking that year. I went on a diet all at the same damn time. I told the doctor if I hadn't have tried to start getting healthy, this wouldn't have happened. I'd have just been going on all right. He says, no, you probably would have just died. So, whatever. Anyway, just give me your input. I'm going to stay here for another seven minutes and finish and eat these corn dogs for my lunch. And I'm going to get down the road to uh, my Flying J stop this evening. So, and at that point, I'll be 240 miles away from delivery tomorrow and then going over to my other one. Uh, so yeah, we'll keep we'll talk about that. But yeah, just give me some info info in uh, in the comments about what I just asked. Also, to piggyback off of that, I don't want to. 
probably, maybe I will eventually. I really don't want to have to take this factory refrigerator out because I, I, I mean, it would be nice to have the, uh, the, the, the dorm size refrigerator freezer that has kind of a, this is a small, I would say mid-size freezer in it to where I can store more foods, right? In the truck and follow them out as I need it. But I'm also looking at portable freezers. And I also know people have taken the seats out, putting the full-size freezers in here. Um, even, I even see stuff seat, uh, seat belted into the seat. I really don't want to do that. Um, the most logical way for me to do it, probably going to want to just strap it up on, on the upper bunk there. But I want suggestions of a freezer out here on the truck. I would like to have one. I need to take some measurements. I would like to have one that would fit under my bunk. That would be great. Just so, you know, if I want to buy like a bulk bag of chicken breasts, uh, some steaks, some hamburger, you know, you got to eat that stuff quick. You just can't leave it in your fridge. And I'm not going to eat, you know, if I can stock up on it, I'm not really stock up, but, you know, have some supply on it and uh, oh, I can just grab, you know, what, some just of freezers for in the truck and how you would mount them. Some people say, just hell, put it right here in the middle, in the middle of the thing at night when you're sleeping, uh, lay it on the seat. That's a possibility. I mean, I'm, I'm overthinking it, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions. So help me out. Give me some information. Uh, what works for you? How do you use your stuff uh, on the road? Some people said, just don't stay out that long. You don't have to worry about it. Buddy, I live in my truck right now, okay? I'm not worried about home. I got plans. I got a vision. I'm working on that. So and that's going to entitle me to stay right here in the truck. So. Anyhow, that's it. Let me uh, finish my dog, my hot dogs, my corn dogs, and uh, let's get back on the road. All right, we are at the fuel stop. Now, I was in a, I'm in a dilemma. Um, I just double-checked to, to look for a fuel spot cheaper from, from where I'm at. Why? I mean, I've driven um, 462 miles today. I've been on duty, total of on duty, nine hours, but I've only got three hours, but I've got three hours left of my 14. And I'm 250 miles away from drop off. Now, like I said, I have three hours left of my 14 hour clock, which means I, I wouldn't, I feel like, like I, I can go a couple more hours. The problem is, and why I don't get fuel now and keep going a couple hours is because today's Monday. Fuel cutoff is at midnight. I want to wait till tomorrow to get fuel. But the further east I go from here, the higher everything goes. So, and not just by like a nickel. It's like 30 cents. <laughs> everything gets, just goes up. Like right here seems to be the, the sweet spot of uh, fuel. Right around 335, 340. There's a QT right across the street, 339. Um, here at the Flying J where I'm at, it's 375, but once I minus my 36 cent discount, 339. So, there's QT technically on the list is cheap, cheapest on the route now. Um, but when you add the discount in, you know, I'm, I'm matching that. So, I mean, I do feel like I can, I, like I said, I woke up at 3.30, 3.30 this morning, and I just, I, I couldn't go back to sleep. I don't know why I woke up like that, like that but I did. Um, so I've been up for a while. But, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a good side and downside. One is, I, I'm going to go to Denny's here and uh, get a meal, have a meal. I like a country fried steak, so... Or I might look on DoorDash, see what else is around. There's a Wendy's over there. I don't know. There might be something the around. Shut up, Linda. Damn it. This might affect navigation's functionality. I hate that crap. Even if I don't have a GPS, I don't give a damn. Well, tell me. I don't, I don't need to hear that. So, anyway. If I go to... Because I, I know I'll go to sleep early. So, if I'm asleep by 7 or 8, I'll probably wake up 4 or 5 again. And I can have this delivered in four, four hours drive time away. So I could, if I leave and hit the road about six, five or six, like I did this morning, I could be there about 10 30, 10 o'clock, shoot the 100 miles over. And I even considered waiting until tomorrow to get fuel, like go on and come back here to get fuel. Because right now I've got three eighths of a tank. The issue is from here to there, 250, 100, 
miles to get over to um, Albany. That's another. That's 350 total. The 350 back here, 700 miles. I can't go 700 miles on three eighths of a tank. I just can't. Oh, and the load that I'm picking up tomorrow. And remember the load that I said I was gonna have to take off of me. They took it off of me, but I rebooked it. Why? You know the the, the Walgreens in Houston for 6 a.m. Thursday morning from PG, P and G, 13,000 pound load. Uh, the reason. I had them, uh, I, I rebooked it, it's because there was nothing else. And I didn't want to wait another day or two and, and try, like, I didn't want to wait till the day to see what was there tomorrow and, and, and risk not having anything. So, yeah, I had, they took it off of me on Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Saturday morning, they took it off of me. And then, uh, I think it was Saturday night, I rebooked it. <laughs> Gotta make them dollars, man. Gotta make them dollars. Told you, there's areas of improvement that I have uh, on that spreadsheet. I, 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 I just gotta grind. I gotta grind and make the revenue. That's just bottom line. I got to do what I got to do. But I'm still looking for something for uh, Friday afternoon now. Um, I, I want one more load. And, I, and I'm actually changing my mentality a little bit too. Because I've been basing everything on... Doing a reset, doing a reset, doing a reset. I may not even, I mean, I could work on recaps sometimes, but then again, you know how our days go. Some are five or six hours because you got to wait on delivery times or whatever. Some are 12 or 14. Um, so that, if you if you go to try to run recaps, then those, those things are going to run into effect towards the uh, end of the day. So... I don't know. We'll see. But I want at least one more load. If I can get this, I got one load saved. I think it's going to Akron, Ohio. I really don't want to go up north yet because they're still getting winter time up there. But uh, we'll see. Because like I said, I've been playing around with my routes, right? Uh, I, I, I learned last week that I, or at least, at least last week I was able to, uh, Texas does have loads. You just got to book them ahead of time. And that's kind of the area I want to be in. So I was able to do it out and back in a week. Um, now I'm going to try to go out. It seems like I can always get a load to Texas, right? So I think I'm going to go out, keep myself out a couple weeks, and then see how easy it is to get me back, get, get me back in that area. And, uh, you know, without messing up my, my pay schedule, right? So... I need, to, I need to develop a pattern for myself to keep the money rolling in and also have time off. That's that's what I'm working on. Uh, and again, there's no there's no black and white saying, hey, here's this load. Every, I mean, there's loads out there. I want you to learn them, and you know when they come out, you'll know be you'll know to be on that board at that time and grab that son of a gun. So I need somebody at home sitting on that computer every damn day for me. <laughs> Um, I can't do it. I can't do it while I'm driving. So, anyhow, yeah, I'm just staying here tonight just because it's, it's only because of fuel, the fuel cost. The longer I've been here just a few minutes, the longer I sit here, <laughs> I can feel myself going downhill. But the, the drive was fine, and, and luckily, we're today, Monday, the, the eclipse. Luckily, I wasn't in an area like I got a, I was reading messages here as I parked. Um, but I got a buddy that lives up around in Columbus and he's like idiots have been parked on the side of the highway on the interstate there since 11 o'clock um, call, causing traffic jams and shit and uh, luckily though but I, had, I, had, I was kind of worried about dealing with Eclipse traffic Eclipse, why did I say it's so weird I was kind of worried about dealing with Eclipse uh, whatever Eclipse traffic um, just because people being parked on the side of the road trying to look at the, the, the Eclipse Eclipse. Why am I saying it? Why am I putting so much pronunciation on the E? It's Eclipse. You half a meatball? Yeah, sloth. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but it's been, I, in the southern I-10 going from Texas to, uh, going east, it's been all gray and overcast, no sun. I ain't to worry about none of that crap. So, even when the eclipse happened, it was just looked like a thunderstormy day, which is really what it was. Hasn't been storming per se so much as raining here and there, but 
no suit, no thunderstorms really, but uh, that's all it looks like, just a dark gray thunderstormy day. So without, I don't even know, I don't even know what time the, I, I didn't get no effect from the eclipse, which I'm cool with. But an easy, easy, easy drive. So anyhow, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and settle in. I'm gonna go into Denny's, and I'm, I'm hoping to be passed out. It's uh, 4:34 now. Hoping to be passed out by seven. So, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. <clears throat> all right. So last night while I'm laying in bed before I go to sleep, I look at uh, my assignment for today, the P and G in Albany, Georgia, to go pick. I deliver on Houston Walgreens on Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Um, I look at the trailer details, the trailer assignment, or the assigned trailer details for this trip. And I noticed it was tagged as out of service defects, OOS defects. So I called SEM, Schneider Emergency Maintenance, and that's usually the people that I call when I see it something weird on the trailer just to confirm whether it's bad or, or good or whatever because a lot of times when you get like a trailer that has some uh, severe defects pending or out of service defects the simplest thing is the, the person the maintenance tech who repaired it forgot to close out the work order this wasn't the case that trailer is indeed out of service due to some frame and a support beam broken and p and these people don't know anything about this crap or the thing. They just see an orange empty trailer. Hey, let's load it. So, anyway, after finding that out, I had to call overnight services, which, oh my God, they suck. I, they're shorthanded. It takes a, I can't say they suck as the people working there. The process of this department sucks. They didn't get this steering wheel much away a little bit. Nope. All right. But, or, let me go down. Nope. All right, well, whatever, I tried. So anyhow, they call me back. I tell them the situation. I was like, okay. I was like, I, I, was like, I think the easiest solution, because I'm not going to be there at about 2 o'clock this afternoon. I'm trying to be proactive to get this issue fixed before I get there, so I don't have to spend time there four or five hours on site, which is going to ruin everything beyond that. So I was like, why don't we just get a hold of PNG, have them transload that load into another trailer. And uh, I said, that's a good idea. So she started the ball rolling, and I, and I went to bed. I woke up at 6, saw a message from her, and it says exactly, Larry was sending an email to a customer to transload from that trailer. First shift will check up on it and call their office contacts in the morning. Please follow up if you haven't heard back from us tonight. Thanks. Uh, and tonight would have been, you know, while I was asleep. So that's the last message I heard from her. So I contacted my... BOA. She's like she spoke. She called, to, spoke to someone. And they said that, that she said that he seemed to knew what she was talking about, but their contacts with PNG don't get in until just a little bit later. I was like, fine. I'm just trying to be proactive because if this doesn't get, if this isn't resolved by the time I get there, everything for the rest of the week is going to get canceled. I've got these loads scheduled back to back to back to back. If one messes up, one doesn't get resolved. The whole week is trashed. So, I just told Samantha, I said, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and start my day, go on about my business, and hopefully by the time I get there, it'll be fine. We shall see. <laughs> so, uh, I just left the sleeper moved up front. Let me get ready to do my pre-trip. Pull around, get fuel. Walk inside. Hopefully, this place has breakfast burritos. I'll get if not, I'll get some sort of breakfast sandwich and a monster and some water. And we're already four hours away. We're 248 miles away. Trucker path. Truck. Trucker path says ETA four hours and two minutes. But it's straight down the end. It's straight down I-10. And I get off I-10 and a mile off I-10 is where this DC is. So. Three and a half hours probably. So if I leave, if, I, if I'm out of here on the road by eight, I'll be there. I'll be there before noon, possibly depending on traffic and all that. So anyway, let's get pre-trip and uh, get some fuel, grab breakfast, and hit the road, baby.
we're in a rest area uh, on the east side of Pensacola at a party. Um, what you just saw, I just like you know, I, I, I stopped now too. One, I had to use the restroom, and two, I wanted to remember to get those clips that, uh, that I seem to forget about because I was planning on doing this in past videos, but I just keep forgetting of the time stamp that I had in my head. But and it's just a little five minutes quiet drive time. You see and hear exactly what I see and hear in real time. We're no speed up, no music, no nothing. It's like you being in the truck with me. We sharing that we sharing the scene. And I like going through Mobile, and I like going through waterways. Um, you heard me say it before. I love the water, which is why I like going up and down I, I, over I ten, the southern part of the country. There's a lot of water areas, like the one playing over your over over me talking right now. This is going through Pensacola. A lot of waterways, man, and it's it's the Gulf. Uh, I, just, I, I just, that's my zen. That's my happy place. Is the water area. So, um, I want a place on a lake somewhere, or, or on, on, on. I want water on, on my property whenever I decide to land, wherever I decide to land. So anyhow, I'm only uh, 100 miles away from uh, Family Dollar in Mariana, Florida. I'll be there in back up it's an hour and 48 minutes I'll be there in about an hour and 30 minutes right now it's 11.07 in the a.m. central time and I just dined on me too when I'm going over to Albany, Georgia I got to, I'll got i be crossing over into east coast time so I'll be losing an hour there so I won't get there until probably about 3 o'clock versus the 2 I was expecting probably even 4 o'clock now but the good news is it might, it'll give me more time to get that shit translated, even though I haven't got a message or anything revolving any communication about that while I've been driving. So hopefully all that's taken care of by the time I get there. But anyway, I'll be back. I, I plan on... I'm going to try to get back to Gulfport, Mississippi, where I stayed last night. But that's a 700-mile trip with all the stops. I don't think I'll be able to get that far. But either way, I... Uh, I can, I can get back to Pensacola area easy. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. But it's not a big deal because, I mean, I'm, I'm 700 miles from pick up the drop-off, but it doesn't deliver till 6 a.m. Thursday morning. So I would like to get a couple hundred miles back this way. And that way I, do, I can drive all the way tomorrow at part. There's a truck stop, a little pop shop, a little pop truck stop right on the corner by the, the uh, Walgreens in Houston. I'll just stay there. Uh, I haven't stopped there before, but, I, but uh, old Kendall, he told me about it before I got there the last time, and I saw it as I was making my turn to Walgreens the other night. I saw it over there, so I don't know how many parking spots are there, so if I get there early enough, which should be about five or six, I should be able to have a spot there for the night and get that way and get up early and be there at 6 a.m. for my live unload Thursday morning, and then go from there. So that's the plan right now, so we'll see how it all works out. <laughs> You know how trucking is, man. You just never know. You try to be proactive and get things done, but it doesn't always work out that way. So, yeah, let's keep going see how it works out. All right, so after I left the rest area, I was driving to finish out the trip to get to my delivery. I got a message saying, yeah, they got a hold of PMG. They did a transload already, and I'm not, so they swapped the trailers out. So I'm here now. Um, I just connected to the trailer. I just did my pre-trip at Marin Up, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. But it's a little later in the day than I thought it was going to be. It's 6.43. Technically for me, it's 5.43 because I'm operating on Central Time. But I've only got uh, like four hours left to my 14-hour clock. I'm going to go back. I don't know how far I'm going to go back. But it's 752 miles from here to drop off. So I'd like to knock out about 150 miles in the next few hours. But we're on a lot of Georgia back roads too, so that might be hard. But uh, I'm gonna go as far as I can make it, and uh, and then knock out the 600 or so whatever's left tomorrow, so, so I can be there in Houston, right there delivery Thursday morning. So let me quit jibber jabber. My 14 hour clock is ticking away. I can't stop it. So <laughs> here's the road. <clears throat> All right, it's gonna be a little grainy because guess what? It's dark. It is uh, 10 or 9 Eastern time. 909 Central because I, I I got back into the Central Time Zone. I'm on I-10, uh, mile marker 96 at a rest area. I tried to stop at the Lowe's about 50 miles back. It was jacked. It was just packed full. Even the pumps. I was like, the even trucker pass said it was full. It was full, but I figured I would go in there, 
at least go to the fuel island, maybe grab some food, park on an exit or a rest stop or wherever I could. Because I, I, right now I've only got 30 minutes left on my 14. So I could have went a little further, but I don't like working this long, this late to begin with because of parking, especially on the East Coast. Anyway, I couldn't even get now. I couldn't even get nowhere to park at a, a diesel aisle because diesel aisles were backed up. There was just creative parking everywhere. I finally found a little hole and I went to the scale and got the hell out of there. So I, I was like, hell, I got ramen in the truck. I got, I can make grilled cheese sandwiches. I got snacks. I, I don't have any protein. I don't have any meat. I'm out of like deli meats and anything like that. So I got eggs. I can cook some egg and make an omelet. Egg and cheese omelet. Or che or egg and cheese. A cheese omelet. <laughs> I, I got food, right? So it's not like I'm gonna starve. And I'm, I don't, let's be real, it wouldn't hurt me to not eat tonight. But um, so anyway, I, I, I was planning on another uh, uh, rest area 37 miles away because this one wasn't even wasn't even on the trucker path of the of the list for some reason. I saw this sign. I was like, hey, what the hell? What's this? But it's not one of those like normal truck rest areas where you can just like pull off the interstate and in both directions, you know, it, both sides have one where you just pull off and all of a sudden you're in the parking lot. No, this one you had to get off an exit, go up under the underpass and go behind a, a, a little, what was it called, Joe Bob's or something truck stop, like 10, 10 spaces in the dirt lot behind it. But then you pull in, once you pass that out, you, you're back here in the rest station and you, or the rest area. So this is fine for me. All I really care about when I stop somewhere is if there is an open restroom all night long, honestly. You get an emergency number two, I, I'm, I, I'm not doing it in a bucket. I'm not going to do it in the grass. I'm going to avoid those have two moments as much as I can, right? So, um, like I said, emergencies happen, of course, but uh, I, I, I want to be in a position to where I can handle it the right way. <laughs> so... But, yeah. So when I left, it was 750 miles from Albany, or from the PNG, to Houston, Walgreens. I am currently, I got 613 miles left to go. So 610 of that will be to the truck stop I was telling y'all about, right there at the corner. I should be able to pull all that out tomorrow, no problem. Today, running, uh, 13 and a half hour, I did 544 miles, which as long as I was on duty isn't a whole lot, but I was on, you know, I had to, I shouldn't be out here this late to begin with, but I was delayed a couple hours because I had to wait for the office people to come in at 8 o'clock Eastern time, so I had to wait for them to come in, and then, yeah, to make sure the process was rolling to get that trailer issue fixed at PNG, which everything worked out fine, so I, I'm very pleased that it worked out correctly today so but anyway i am a little tired you see me yawning i just went into the facilities and freshened up and uh, oh it's humid as hell it's florida of course i'm right i'm i'm between pensacola and uh, the border which is uh 96 miles away i guess maybe i'm not maybe i'm not quite to pensacola yet what would have been good for me, or I don't want to say better, but would have been more... No, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. I keep forgetting where I'm at on the East Coast. No, I'm not even in Pensacola yet. Okay. I'm about 60 miles from Pensacola. But that's fine. I didn't have enough time to get all the way there anyway. Oh, look at the little loves on the way down. That would have been cool, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, I've stopped. I'm off duty now. Went off duty at 21.56 Eastern Time, which would have been, if, we'll just say 9 o'clock. Well, I went off duty at 9 o'clock, so I can't go, I can't even start back to work till 7 a.m., which is fine for me. I like 7, 8 o'clock. That's my work time anyway, so. Oh. So I'm going to hop in the back. Probably, I might just crash out. I mean, I, I had a late uh, lunch. It was about five o'clock. I stopped and had a, got a subway. I got a, I got a steak and cheese sub there about five o'clock before I uh, got off the interstate into the back roads of Georgia in the middle of nowhere. So, or as I was getting off the interstate in Tallahassee. So, uh, I'm not really hungry right now. Well, 
so I can go to sleep. Anyway, let me just stop yawning on camera. And here, if you if I made you yawn at all through watching this, <laughs> comment down below. I'll see y'all in the morning. Good morning, YouTube. Hey, it's now Wednesday, and I just dawned on the last night I was uh, as I was laying down that uh, today is Wednesday actually. Uh, and so this video goes live today, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it now because this is just gonna be one long drive day. That's it. Um, unless something spectacular happens that deserves video, then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. I just got on, I just went on duty to do my pre trip. Uh, my 10 hours, I was on my 10 hour for 10 hours and 35 minutes. Um, I kind of slacked off a little bit because I'm thinking run through, uh, run through Pensacola and Mobile, Alabama, 8 9 o'clock in the morning may not be a very good idea. So, um, but if I leave here now, I won't hit. I'll hit Pensacola right around probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's at work by then. So anyhow, but the rest of the day should be pretty smooth sailing, I'm hoping. Looks like Trucker Path has some uh, weather alerts coming up, severe thunderstorms, but it did say the time was early a.m. to 7 a.m., so hopefully it's over with by the time I get through those areas. But I got 611 miles to destination. Uh, but there's a truck stop right around the corner so that's where I'm that's where I'm going I gotta go 610 miles today just to get to that truck stop and hopefully it's got available parking for me so we'll see anyhow um that's gonna be it thanks so much for watching thanks for all, all the support of the channel I've been I've been looking at an, an, an analytics lately and uh which I used to never do but I keep getting emails saying check us out check us out so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of breaking and learning how the channel's going and you guys are doing great um support you up and show me has been great you know when it comes to watch time anyway and you know i don't look at the i don't look at the big <laughs> like real youtubers do i don't look at the the revenue numbers i don't look at the uh the uh the amount of views versus subscribers i don't look at that ratio what i look at is the watch time the ones that you that are watching are usually the ones that watch the entire video so i appreciate that thank you so much and uh yeah if, if you're not subscribed hit subscribe if you have if you I'll talk about that later. Anyway, whatever. Have a great day, y'all. And uh, I gotta get, I gotta hit the road.